Hi there, I'm Robert Kikuchi Ngoho, a storyteller from San Francisco. That's where I was born. Oh, I'm half Japanese, half Filipino, Asian American. Oh yeah, my ancestors came from those Asian countries, Japan and the Philippines, well over a hundred years ago. And my name is Nancy Wang, and I am Chinese American, also known as Asian American. I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, but live in San Francisco now. My people came from China over 170 years ago, 1850 is when they arrived, to come to this country to make it their home. And we are Ethnotech. We're going to bring you a story now, a story called Great Joy, and it's from the Jataka tale of traditional stories from India and Myanmar. There once was a very poor farmer who had a meager plot of land. He could barely eke out an existence. Oh, toiling under the broiling, blazing sun. Tilling the soil under wind and rain. Ooh, Life was Hard. But he felt blessed, for he had his partner, his best friend, who worked with him side by side on that land. Together they endured the summer's heat. Oh, the torrential monsoon rain. And without ever a word of complaint. So grateful was the farmer towards this helper, he gave his friend a special name. (laughs) Great Joy. Joy. Oh, the mere presence of Great Joy, with his joyful spirit and devotion, it brought a smile to the farmer's face knowing that he was never alone in his daily struggle to work the farm. One day, Great Joy looked into the farmer's eyes and respectfully acknowledged their friendship and spoke. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, his best friend, Great Joy, was an ox. And as you know, you're probably aware that humans and animals can have a very special bond. Think about your pet dog or pet cat or... Maybe a pet turtle. You don't really have to have words to communicate. However, between the farmer and his ox, great joy, they they actually actually did use use words. words. (laughs) Master, you have always treated me with kindness, both in words and deeds. Well, if the sun blazes too hot, you let me rest in the shade of a tree or wallow in the cool mud. Oh, never harsh insults or a curse, but only gentle words of encouragement. And never have you raised your voice, never the blow of a stick against my hide. Now the farmer expresses deep gratitude for his four-legged friend, for he knew how hard ox worked. Life on the farm was difficult, lifting a log. Or towing a rock to clear a field. Plowing the muddy land. Or hauling the harvest to the marketplace. My work here on the farm would be impossible without you. You dear, dear friends are truly my great joy. Ah, Master, and I would like to thank you. I want to gift you with a miracle, one that will change our poor life forever. But you must follow my instructions exactly. Now, great joy told the farmer that he must go to the village and place a bet with the wealthiest merchant and that the wager would be that great joy could pull a train of 100 carts of stone and boulders. Ah, if I lose, well, the merchant will get half of our farm. But if I succeed, ah, well, we will get one bag of gold. Half my land, gold, 100 carts of stone, impossible. Oh, oh, trust me, master, am I not your great joy? And so the next day the farmer went to town, and before the wealthiest of merchants he pitched his wager. 
One hundred carts of stones and boulders? I will gladly accept this wager. Oh, if you win, which you won't, uh, I'll indeed reward you with, oh, a bag of gold. Oh, and if you lose, uh, which you will, I'll gladly take half of your land. The, the deal, deal was done. done. The following morning, the farmer proudly led Great Joy on a rope and began their stroll toward the village. All along the way, they could see children skipping by, elderly hoppling down that path. By the time they reached the village, throngs of people had gathered, their heads bobbing up and down, murmuring, Oh, oh they're here. There, right there. Oh, there's the farmer. Oh, there, there's there the ox. Oh, a big ox. Well, eager to see the spectacle, the crowd swarmed the farmer and his ox. And when they parted, standing in the center view, stood that merchant. And behind him, a long train of carts, loaded with stones and boulders. One hundred carts. carts. Filled to the brim. Oh, the crowd ooed and awed as they babbled among themselves. How impossible. Can they do that? Incredible. No way. Too difficult. Definitely crazy. crazy. Well, farmer, it's your beast. Well, the farmer saw the hundred carts and he began to get nervous and told the ox it was not too late to change his mind. Trust me, master. And so the yoke was hitched upon the ox's neck. He was now tethered to cart after cart of granite and shale. Now some of the heads in the crowd bobbed up and down, others back and forth, left and right. Get ready. The murmuring came to a hush. The farmer turned to his friend. Are you ready? The ox nodded. The heads in the crowd now strained forward. Begin! The crowd roared! Great joy lowered his head, digging his hooves into the dirt. Uh, his shoulders bulged. His back muscles rippled. His tail swished up the sand and the dust. His nostrils let out a snort. Uh, the crowd leaned in as the ox strained and he leaned into that yoke. The farmer's brow knitted. Oh, and his forehead dampened with fear and sweating. You, you must do this. You, you, you must. No, trust me, master. You've got to do this or I'll lose half our land. Trust me, master. And then it happened. Somewhere in the sea of wincing faces, a small snicker. A puff of doubt. Across the crowd, then, a head shook in disbelief. Then in the back, a jeer. Then one word. Impossible. Impossible. Well, the insults kept coming. Soon rotten fruit and small stones were tossed and the farmer was thrown into complete doubt and fear. What have you done? You, 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 you've, you've set me up to fail. We'll be ruined. Oh, oh. Master, have you forgotten my name? You? Who am you? I? You? You are stupid. You are an idiot. You horrid beast. You failure. Oh. And now, with Fear and false pride. The farmer lifted a stick and began beating and beating his friend. You stupid, stupid, worthless, ungrateful uh. beast! Uh. Upon hearing those cruel words, the ox relaxed, straightened his posture, loosened his tension on the yoke, and there was no movement among the carts of stone. The ox stood absolutely upright and still. The crowd continued hurling insults and garbage at the man and his ox. The farmer, shamed by his horrible event, turned to leave when... Not so fast. A deal is a deal. The farmer had lost his wage to the merchant, all his land. Half his land. <sighs> that night, back at the farm, the ox and the farmer stared into the outdoor fire. The only sound were the crackling of the rays and the... Sobs coming from the farmer. Between those sobs, the farmer asked great joy. Why? Why did you fail me? Why? Why did you not trust me? Have I not served you faithfully under the sun, wind, and rain? And why was your fear greater than your trust? Why did you beat me? Did you forget who I am? I'm so sorry. What? Is my name. Suddenly, the farmer immersed in shame and sobbed. Great joy. Great joy leaned closer toward the farmer and calmly offered the farmer a new set of instructions, a new 
possibility. What? Another chance. What? Again? You want me to return to the merchant with, with a second contest while wagering the other half of my land? Oh, trust me, master. Remember, I am your great joy. The farmer sighed. Perhaps it was his lesson to trust more than to be afraid. And so the next day, the farmer once again stood before the wealthy merchant. <laughs> what? Oh, again? <laughs> oh, a hundred carts of stone. Again, you want to try? Well, surely that sun's heat's gotten to your head. <laughs> of course, we will wager again. And if you win, which you won't, I'll throw in one cart full of gold. And if you lose, which you will, I will gladly take the rest of your land. The following day, when the farmer in great joy rove, arrived at the village, once again the word had spread throughout the countryside. Thousands of mean faces welcomed them with sneers, their mockery souring the, the, the air. The merchant pointed to the 100 carts of stone waiting for them. Hit your beast! Get ready! The crowd leaned in, their doubting glances darting between the stone cart and the ox being hitched by the yoke. Are you ready, my friend? The farmer replied to Ox with a gentle nod and a smile. Begin! The crowd oohed and odd. Ox flexed his muscles. His hooves dug in. His neck lowered. His muscles rippled. He gave out a snort. The dust rose up. The ox leaned forward. The crowd as well. And now there was a single moment of absolute silence and stillness. The train of stone carts... Unmoved. The ox looked into the farmer's eyes and asked, What is my name? You are my great joy. Suddenly, the ox's entire body surged with an immense power, filling every cell of his muscle. The crowds murmured. S they stopped. Only silence. Then a creak. A shriek of metal. Then a jolt. Boom. Then another. Boom, boom. And another. Boom, boom. The, the wheels, wheels groaned. The front car boom. launched boom. and lurched. Then suddenly the train of cars inched forward. Wheels boom. turned, boom. grinding, boom. creaking, boom. rolling, boom. inch by inch. Foot by foot. Then one cart after boom. another. Boom. Then ten. Boom. Then twenty. Boom. Then more and more and soon. One hundred cars. Carts. carts of stone and granite. Shale, boulders big and small. Rolled down. Down the road, pulled, pulled by, by the, the power, power of, of great joy. joy. The crowd went wild. Garlands tossed and filled the air. Cheers and peals of laughter filled the streets of the village. Everyone was overjoyed. Save one. The, the merchant. merchant. <laughs> well, all right, all right. A deal is a deal. Hurrah! Hurrah! Oh, that night... Two friends sat before the fire. The flames seemed to giggle triumphantly, sending up sparks of light, dancing like fairies. When their eyes met, there was a sparkle, not from the fire, nor from the shimmering cart full of gold nearby, but from a deeper light of friendship and kindness. The ox stepped forward, gazed at the farmer, his kind master, and spoke. <coughs> All things are possible when you remember the power of great joy. Well, as you can see in our storytelling style, we use our bodies. We use it to make shapes and the environment and emotions. Um, so in the story of Great Joy, it had a story of an ox. I used my hands and made a sound. Now, an, an ox is a cousin of the cow, but bigger and bulkier and, and a solid tan, dark tan sh uh, uh, shade of brown. And... It's different because it has horns that curl. And thus, when he does the ox... Can you make that sound? Try it. And now make the gesture. Beautiful. Now, sometimes in a story, like the story of the great ox, we uh, have a cart that's rolling full of rocks. 
Sometimes a sound effect like a clicking sound, gong, and a chugging of metal, gong, 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 gong. Many kinds of sh um, shapes you can make. Oh, oh, but you know, part, 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 partly why we were going like this is because when you have a heavy cart of stone and shale, hundreds of pounds, well, it doesn't run smoothly no, like it this. Takes a lot of effort. Ooh, yes, so flex your muscles right now. Make a fist and really like it's full, really hard, and yeah. make the sound. Go ahead, Robert's good at making those sounds. <laughs> yes, good, an ox could good. pull a cart full of stones, but you know, there are other animals too that have other kinds of talents. Um, <laughs> oh, for example, what animal might this be? That's right. The talent of a slithery snake gliding across the grass. Or, or it could like also this. be, yeah, or a, perhaps a fish like this in the water, or the tail of the fish skirting across a, a brook. Yes. Other animals too? Like Nancy, do a dragonfly. Oh, a dragonfly. Well, you know, they do have four wings, and I don't have four arms, but still you can get the feeling. They can dart back and forth. They can go backwards and forwards and go back and forth like this, and they can even go upside down, I'm told, by my friend Linda. Ooh. Many animals. Um, how about, oh, this is my favorite one. Hand on my hip. Long, long, long gray nose. <laughs> What animal is that one? That's right. An elephant. And that's the trunk, right? And this is the ear. Floppy ears. Yes, many kinds of shapes you can make. And How about so, a rooster? Oh, a rooster. Many ways. Of course, rooster has that bright red comb. Woo, 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 woo. That's the Chinese way they say cock-a-doodle-doo. Woo, 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 woo. So we got the wing and the comb. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, many kinds of shapes. Oh, here's another favorite of mine. You got an animal with four legs and a head and a hard shell as he slowly walks across the shore. Which is a turtle. So, have fun with those. Yeah, make them there's, you go to the zoo or, or go on Google and look at all the different kinds of animals there are in the world and see how you would come up with a sound and a gesture. And have fun. All right. Thanks for listening. Well, I hope you had fun and learned something new. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our Asian American Storytopia channel and it's free. We hope to see you again at our next Asian American Storytopia program. Until then, Sayonara! That means goodbye in Japanese. Sayonara! Bye!